This video was made possible by Brilliant. Learn complex subjects simply at brilliant.org slash H-A-I. Parrots are terrifying. Not only are they likely actually CIA spy drones, but they also talk, and boy is the idea of a little thing in my home that constantly knows what I'm doing and can speak terrifying. Unrelated second point, but the other day I was consulting with my Alexa for legal advice, and she mentioned, as some precedent, an interesting case. The case of a parrot in Witness Protection Program. One day, sometime in the mid-90s, a woman named Susie Heck, who was director of a wildlife rehabilitation center in Louisiana, received a visit from an old friend who had with her this bird named Echo. I promise you that's the real name of this bird. This isn't all subliminal Amazon advertising. It's just as much a coincidence as that time I used Prime Now to order groceries from Whole Foods and the delivery driver's favorite TV show was also the Amazon Prime original series The Grand Tour, available now. Echo was a chestnut-fronted macaw with beautiful plumage, a green body, red shoulders, and a dark, dangerous secret. You see, Echo had been owned by a New Orleans crime boss, and it sometimes happens when you live in the house of a crime boss, one day Echo was in the wrong place at the wrong time and had seen something he wasn't supposed to see. Now, normally that might not be a problem, so long as Echo kept his mouth shut, but the problem was, no matter how many times you show them the Godfather, parrots don't seem to understand that snitches get stitches. At night, Echo would make certain creepy, concerning, and possibly incriminating sounds. Sounds of a child crying, sounds of moaning, sounds of a loud thundering hitting noise, followed by the sound of eerie, maniacal laughter. This left the authorities who now possessed him only two options. One, hide Echo in a haunted house, or two, hide him in a makeshift animal witness protection program. They chose the latter, stashing him at Heck Haven Rehabilitation Center in Lake Charles, Louisiana, where the staff were instructed not to tell anyone about his presence. Now, you might be wondering, why was Echo in danger? An animal can't really testify in court, can it? Well, there's actually a long history of animals in court. In fact, until the 18th century, animals would regularly be put on trial for their supposed crimes. They would often have legal representation from actual lawyers, human witnesses would be called, and a judge would rule on the outcome. In 1394, a French pig was hung for sacrilege after stealing and eating a communion wafer. How you hang an animal with a neck like this? I don't know. In 1474, a rooster in Switzerland burned at the stake for supposedly laying an egg. In 1508, a group of French rats were tried for the charge of eating a barley crop, but they were acquitted thanks to the work of their defense lawyer, who argued that the rats could not reasonably be expected to come to court because of the presence of dogs and cats throughout the city who might eat them should they show their faces in public. Today, though, there have been a number of cases in the modern day where animals were in the courtroom but not facing prosecution. The actions of properly trained bloodhounds tracing a scent are admissible in court as evidence, and even when they're untrained, sometimes dogs can be used as witnesses. In 2008, a dog named Scooby, who had been in the room when his owner was killed, appeared as a witness in a murder investigation to see how he responded to a suspect. Echo the parrot isn't even alone in the category of avian testimony. On several other occasions, a parrot has witnessed a crime, and lawyers have attempted to use the parrots as part of their cases. Now, whether or not a parrot is allowed to testify in court is a difficult legal question that's a bit hard to explain. In answering it, I could do a bunch of googling, try to understand all the legal implications of this really weird thing, not understand all of it, and then give a really short answer that I justify by saying that I don't want to bore you with the details, when actually I just don't understand the details. Not that I've ever done that. Instead, though, I've decided to get some help from someone who actually knows what they're talking about. I'll just try to keep it short, because he bills by the minute. Thanks disembodied voice. Hearsay is an out-of-court statement used for the truth of the matter asserted. Statement is usually defined as coming from a person, so a document written by a person or an audio recording of someone speaking is considered hearsay, but a truly computer-generated image is not. So even though birds aren't people, they still arguably relay the words of a human, which brings in a hearsay problem, in the same way that you run into hearsay issues when you try to admit an audio recording into court. That said, if a parrot ever says, don't shoot, don't shoot, it might have heard a dying declaration, which would be an exception to the hearsay rule, and it might make that testimony relevant and admissible. But even if you get over the hearsay issue, parrot-based testimony faces an even greater problem, unfair prejudice. The Federal Rules of Evidence Rule 403 allow the judge to throw out evidence that is considered, quote, more prejudicial than probative. In other words, the risk of unfairness is higher than the relevancy of that particular evidence. Here, can we really trust a witness that is so bird-brained? And while bird law seems all cute and fuzzy, what if the animal in question turns state's evidence? When can police use animals against you? This has been actually a huge issue at the Supreme Court over the last few years. 
because in particular, dogs are really good at sniffing out drugs. Sure, they're man's best friend, until they narc on you. And while Polly only wants a cracker, Fido wants your crack. The Supreme Court says that using a dog at a traffic stop to sniff out drugs is not an unreasonable search and seizure. And if the dog alerts, it's sufficient for probable cause to search the whole car, which the police may not have had otherwise. That said, the police can't hold the car for an unreasonable amount of time to call in a dog. So, woof. Thanks, Devin. You can email me the invoice at brian at realengineering.com. Now, I know this will seem strange for HI viewers, but Devin is actually qualified to talk about what he's talking about because he's a real lawyer with a real YouTube channel called Legal Eagle, where he just put out a very interesting video all about hearsay in a slightly more real context, which you should check out. Now, there is one thing that Parrots and I have in common. We both love to repeat the same thing. Brilliant is the best place to learn complex topics, as their courses work to break concepts down into small intuitive chunks and then build them back up to one bigger concept. It's easy to understand small chunks, but harder to understand big concepts, so Brilliant's style of learning is perfect for these big complex topics like vector calculus, 3D geometry, gravitational physics, all things that you might think are out of reach, but truly are not with Brilliant. If you're looking for when to start, I'd personally recommend the fascinating Statistics Fundamentals course, but also, you can sign up for free at brilliant.org HAI. Then, the first 200 people that go to that link will also get 20% off upgrading to Premium.